Hello FTC teams, today I'll be explaining the use of a linkage in FTC and going through some of the optimizations, pros and cons that your team have to consider when choosing to do a linkage in this season game. So a mechanical linkage is a system of connected parts that transmit motion, force or energy through a system of connected components. Okay, so there is many different types of linkages, however, the three most common that we see in First Tech Challenge is the virtual 4-bar, the scissor linkage or the scissor lift, and the 2-bar mechanical linkage. A parallel 4-bar linkage consists of four rigid bars connected by pivots. It maintains parallelism between the two moving bars, allowing synchronized, smooth and ideal motion for keeping objects level during movement. A scissor linkage consists of interconnected bars forming an X shape. When extended or compressed, the bars pivot at their joints, allowing synchronized linear motion. A two bar mechanical linkage consists of two rigid bars connected by a pivot. It transforms rotational motion of one bar to linear motion of the end effector on the other bar. Okay, so where are these mechanisms actually used? Well, Parallel 4 bars are mainly seen in mechanisms such as arms and path screws, and we can really see this trend occurring in seasons such as power play. Scissor linkages have a slightly different applications. Where teams have long horizontal extensions or vertical extensions, scissor linkages can be used to support wiring. Then we have the 2 bar mechanical linkage. We commonly see these being used for short horizontal distances, however they can be used for angled extensions or longer horizontal distances. Okay, just a quick overview of our centre stage robots outtake system. Okay, so starting at the bottom, we have our motor, our 60 RPM Go Builder motor that is connected to a custom 90 degree gearbox here that powers uh, directly into our axle which then powers our um, two bar mechanical linkage. We have a supporting linkage on this side to reduce the amount of flex that the system has so both sides are equally supported however only one side is powered. We have them connected and um, secured by these 3D printed parts that are mounted to the motor here. Moving on to the actual two bar mechanical linkages themselves. The bars are made out of GoBuilder 8mm beam just connected um, by the 4mm screws. We have in here double stack beams just to provide extra support and strength as well as just to stack the, the beams to get more length as that's what we required to reach um, the second set line on the, on the backdrop. Here you can see our wire casing um, that's just zip tied to the bars. Um, the mechanical linkages just act as a structure where we can um, attach our wires to without us having to really think about um, where or how it's all gonna work because our range of motion is already predetermined by um, these linkages. So it makes it a lot easier to wire up when we have these already in place. And then now to our canner spring solution. We implemented this after um, realizing a 312 RPM motor wasn't gonna cut it for, our, for lifting our slides. So what we did was added a canner spring solution and replaced our motor to 60 RPM. So this counter springing solution is just um, surgical tubing. So it's really strong, rugged, um, elastic material that is really springy um, and does the job quite well. The whole idea with counter spring is um, uh, just reducing the load on the motor. So what we've done here is we've um, angled and we've um, tied up our surgical tubing um, into in through the holes of our bar up to the plate in the pockets here with the whole idea being trying to bring that elbow of the linkage towards the slides because the whole idea of the motors mechanism is to rotate until the um ro uh, yeah rotate until the elbow of the linkage is more towards the slides that being said, if we can make it easier for the motor to do that by adding a counter sprung solution, we're springing that elbow towards the slides, reducing that motor, um, that motor's load, um, 
and yeah, it's just overall increasing the performance out of that robot. Um, this also helps in the speed as well, so it makes it a lot more faster. Okay, so now you have an idea on how we use some two bar mechanical linkages for our FTC rover, I'd like to go through some of the pros and cons that we found when using this mechanism in the center stage season. One, weight efficient. By using less weight, it allows you to allocate um, more weight to other areas of your robot or just generally decrease the overall mass of your robot, allowing you to be faster on the game field. Two, reduce string or belt entanglement. By using linkages, it reduces the amount of components that can get tangled together on your robot. Three, easy to CAD. With very few moving parts, a two bar mechanical linkage is really easy to be able to integrate into your design. Four, little to no maintenance required. With very little moving parts, there's very little to maintain. Five, this never fails. When built correctly, this simple machine can, is able to complete the task reliably every single time without fail. Six, coding. Coding uh, mechanical linkages for linear motion systems is the exact same as coding for strings or belts, only fewer ticks. And it's really fast. Okay, let's talk about the cons. Number one, space. Linkages just take up a lot of space, so it's really important while you're CAD designing to consider how you're going to package all of your other mechanisms, also with your linkages in your design without exceeding the size barriers. This means the travel of the end effector is limited to the height of the pivot point for horizontal extension. Number two, chance of dislocation. Just like in my elbows, there's a chance for the two bar mechanical linkages pivot point to travel too far and have its pivot point go the other direction, essentially locking out the system. And finally, three, counter springing. If not managed correctly, loose counter springing when extending or when retracting could get caught on other components on your robot. Okay, so in terms of powering these linkages, if you have a lighter load and a shorter distance to travel, it's recommended that you use a servo. However, if you have a heavier load and a longer distance to travel, it's recommended that you use a motor. If you use a motor mounted in the center of your robot, you can ensure you have equal power provided to both linkages on either side of your robot, whether you're doing vertical, angled, or horizontal extension. Make sure to prototype with your teams different motors and gear ratios to use for your system as different loads will require different types of motors for the application. Alrighty guys, that's all from me. If you have any questions regarding the topics covered in this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'd just like to wish all the teams like, really good luck in this season and I can't wait to see all the amazing designs that pop up this season. Alright, have a good one.